Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this week's supply and demand, forex and gold fundamental and technical analysis. And let's get into the week ahead. And today's agenda, um, or this week's agenda, is going to be uh, looking at the week ahead, a uh, trade update on the Aussie Swiss that I took last week and uh, there was a trade breakdown on that so you can watch last week's um, video. Going to the uh, major analysis on uh, the Forex pairs, major Forex pairs, and also two new trades that I took this uh this week so let's get into the week ahead and the upcoming week in the united states will be incredibly active placing emphasis on the fed's interest rate decision inflation data and retail sales investors will also closely track ppi inflation figures and s p global pmis internationally markets will keenly follow monetary policy updates from the european central bank bank of england and the swiss national bank furthermore germany will share insights uh, through the uh, zew economic Sentiment Index Japan will provide the Tankan Large Manufacturers Index and Flash PMIs will emerge from Australia, Japan, the Euro area and the United Kingdom. Unemployment rates will be disclosed for the UK and finally China's economic calendar will highlight the yuan's loans, retail sales, industrial production and house price index and the unemployment rate for November. So lots going on this week just before really the end of the year. I think this is probably going to be one of the busiest weeks We've only got really two main trading weeks before the end of the year. And so, um, yeah, the, the central bank um, uh, statements are, are likely to kind of push back on any kind of rate cuts. But we'll get into that um, in the uh, next uh, segment after uh, the trade update, which was the Aussie Swiss that I took last week. Now, many of you uh, would, if you watched the video, this was basically a stop hunt trade. <clears throat> we entered in and around the uh, one, uh, 0 0.57, and then I moved my stop loss up uh, after prices came down to hit the 50% uh, uh, buy pending order, which ended up being a profitable trade. So locked in a little bit of profit as prices went higher. Um, but then we had this week prices kind of fall away. Um, there wasn't great news for the uh, for the Australian dollar. I think there was like a GDP news that came out lower than, ex um, than forecasted. And so um, basically prices uh, for the Australian dollar anyway didn't appreciate uh, as much as I would want it to at this level. So this trade ended up being uh, pretty much a small win, um, nearly break even, very small win on this trade. So, um, but stick around to the end of the video where I will go over two profitable trades which uh, are the dollar CAD and the pound Swiss. So now getting into the the uh, analysis for the week and starting off on the dollar and the dollar fundamentally uh, we had some good news uh, for the dollar in terms of supportive news for potential dollar appreciation for anyone who is uh, bullish on the dollar um, this would have been good news for you so the u.s labor market defies a slowdown forecast in broad strengthening so payrolls rose nearly uh, 200,000 uh, in November and unemployment fell and our hourly earnings increased 0.4% uh, matching the biggest gains of the year. And so the US labor market uh, unexpectedly strengthened in November with pickups in, in unemployment and wages tempering bets the Federal Reserve will cut rates uh, next year. And it's really important because the narrative now um, is that the first central bank to cut rates is really the bank that you should look to sell and the central bank that is likely to hold rates for the longest before cutting because we're on really an interest rate cutting cycle is going to be the central the, the, the currency that you should basically buy right and i um explain this actually in in um, a video that i released on wednesday and it's called Forex Fundamental Trading Webinar, Use Leading and Lagging Interest Rates to Predict Big Trends. And in this video, I really break down um, how the banks are looking at um, not only uh, in the, when central banks are likely to uh, cut rates and Bank of Japan being one of the, actually the few banks of the only bank, major bank to actually look to hike rates. But it's, a, it's important to understand when they are looking to um, cut rates and that will determine really a currency's value against another, right? 
And so with good news for the uh, United States in terms of uh, the economy, what we've really seen is a pushback in the expectation for rate cuts. And so strong labor market, so in a, in a recession, um, you should have uh, a uh, low employment and high unemployment but in this case you had the opposite right so you had in a, in a in a in a growing economy or at least an economy that is stable you should have rising employment and uh lowering unemployment and that's basically what's happened here so um it says all in all expectations of many cuts next year that have that begin in the first quarter will be paired back said derek tang the economist with LH Mayer Monetary Policy Analytics, Fed policymakers will seize on this to call for patience and a, hold, and a longer hold. So that should be supportive for the dollar going forward. So technically, any pullbacks on the dollar, I think, are buying opportunities. Yes, <clears throat> there is, I think, some inflation data coming out this week as well. And so um, that would obviously have to also be supportive um, of the Federal Reserve um, holding rates, but if it and if it is, then I do think that the dollar has kind of found a, uh, a bottom for now, anyway, in terms of maybe the low being the 102s. So for me, uh, and my bias, um, not necessarily, you know, you can do what you want, this is a financial advice, but um, the dollar for me is still a continued uh, buy. It was looking a bit shaky uh, over the past couple of weeks, but the data now is proving uh, and supporting the narrative for a buy. Uh, the dollar yen, and we saw this week, in fact, the dollar yen uh, strengthened uh, massively, basically cut through any uh, technical levels that anyone would have had on their charts and this is really because um, fundamentals and resentment is what drives price right it's not anything else it's you know it's just price a, you know a price chart is a reflection of what um, uh, a reflection of value right and uh, value is derived in forex anyway by um, uh, interest rates inflation and GDP so the uh, there was some news that came out this week, which was two thirds of Bank of Japan uh, watches expect the end of negative rate regime by April. So um, there was uh, some an announcement that came out uh, this week, which uh, uh, the market interpreted as the Bank of Japan being quite hawkish. And it says here some 94% of polled economists see no policy change in December and 15% axing of sub-zero in January, but half opt for April. So uh, Bank of Japan watches are increasingly expecting the bank to achieve its inflation target with a growing majority forecasting authorities will end the world's last negative rate regime by April, according to Bloomberg survey. More than two thirds polled economists see the Bank of Japan scrapping its negative rate by April, with half of the 52 respondents saying it will happen that month. In the previous survey in October, 29% saw the move coming in April, so an increase now of uh, economists thinking that they're going to uh, raise rates in April. The results uh, come in a week where financial markets were jolted by the prospects of an even earlier end to sub-zero borrowing costs as traders reacted to comments from the Bank of Japan, Governor Kazuo Ueda and... Um, uh, one of his deputies and with hints they could be preparing for a policy shift Japanese bond yield surged by more by the most in a year and the yen strengthened almost four percent so um, you know going back to the charts that's the reason why the, the market is buying the rumor that the um, that the Bank of Japan are likely to potentially hike in April and so you know, it's buy the rumor, right? You have to buy the rumor, get ahead, start making your money before everyone else starts to uh, position themselves. And so that's what we pretty much saw, not just against the, the, the dollar, but again, across the board, right? Um, the yen against um, all other currencies. And so um, I think, and I said this, been saying this for the past few few months, matter of fact, is that 
once the Bank of Japan do start their hiking cycle, um, there are calls, in fact, for prices to come you know, to one two twos. So it could actually come even lower down to around here, the 120 area. So there's thousands of pips in this trade idea, just need the data to support the 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 uh, the, the sentiment and the narrative, right? Because it's not a guarantee. Um, you know, the reason why they're looking to cut rates is to look for um, inflation. They have to look for inflation, inflation rising. And if inflation rises, then they're likely, and the economy as well, uh, uh, does support rate hikes, then the likelihood and the probability of there being rate hikes increases. Therefore, prices should want to, um, you know, uh, move to the downside in terms of the uh, dollar yen or the uh, the dollar or the yen appreciating, right? So there's that. Um, but if you're looking for certain levels then and looking for a pullback, then you're really going to have to look for a pullback all the way back up into the 147s doesn't look likely um or you're looking for at least a lower low all right so prices to go like this make a lower low then a pullback into what would be a supply zone around that um 44 144 area so that would be around here and then you're looking for a short trade. If you're looking for, of course, shorts. If you're looking for long trades, then really a pullback down, I think hitting into these 142s is actually a decent area to look for longs um, and buy the dollar versus uh, the yen. Looking at the dollar CAD, and the dollar CAD was a trade that I ended up taking um, on the Sunday, um, Sunday night on the market open and it was right at the basically end of this uh, close of the uh, daily candle on the Friday that open of this candle here but we'll get into that at the end of the video and um, yeah you can see where prices are pretty much gone right this week which has been uh, which has been brilliant so um, so from that perspective I mean my bias is obviously to go short prices have pulled back a little bit into this supply zone um, and you would really want to buy the uh, Canadian dollar really based off of either Canadian dollar strength or dollar weakness. But um, for now, I think with the data that has come out for the United States, I can't see why the the uh, the dollar would really want to continue moving, you know, all the way to the downside. So and even if it does, to me, that is uh, just uh, as long as the data obviously supports it, it's basically just buying the dollar for even cheaper, right? So my bias is to look for buy trades um, uh, on this in terms of adding into the trades that I've um, the position that I've already got. And so if prices do pull back to any of these areas, I will be adding in as I've taken profits, um, uh, partial profits, I should say, off uh, already. So this is now a profitable trade. And so now I'm just looking for now um, better better prices to get involved and uh, use the profits that I've uh, that I've uh, banked to add in to more trades to the upside potentially right so um, so yeah that's where we are and that's really where the uh, the um, the opportunities are either to I think you know it's, it's to really kind of buy the dollar at the moment and if again prices do come down it's not the end of the world it just means that I'm looking for buy trades either at these areas and then I'm going to look for even you know more buying because I think there's potential upside on the dollar CAD uh, looking at the uh, New Zealand dollar US dollar again prices came up into this area that we'd highlighted uh, last week pretty much bounced off it I was saying that whenever you see a wide zone of supply some people complain and moan and say well that's too wide um, well it is what it is in terms of how we draw supply zones but you can also break them down by using you know uh, traditional technical analysis like you know support and resistance uh, horizontal diagonal um, and and the like so in this case there was horizontal um, uh, resistance in this area of uh, supply so now what we have is um, let me just uh, make sure that this is uh, one second where's the uh, Oh, here it is. Uh, probably looking at actually, yeah, that that would probably be where it is, and I'll move that down to here. So any pullbacks, I think, up into uh, this area here could be potential for a short. Um, the New Zealand dollar, I think, um, has got some news this week. It's got GDP coming out. So um, if that's positive, then this could be a really nice buy from. I wouldn't say necessarily where we are. Uh, actually, there is a demand zone here, uh, but it's. Quite 
it's in the um, it's quite high uh, in terms of uh, where we are. Um, maybe a bit of an expensive area depends, but um, I think now could be okay. But probably the better price to look for would be this uh, 0.604 area and then look for buys around there so if it doesn't work here then you're looking for buy trades down into uh, a deeper uh, discount um, but I wouldn't buy the New Zealand dollar against the US dollar at the moment um, I think both currencies look pretty decent look pretty decent so moving on to the uh, pound dollar and the pound dollar um again the pound this week didn't really have any news but um let's we'll say it's last week but this week uh, we should have a bank of england statement also as well there is unemployment and uh, gdp month for month numbers coming out this uh this week <clears throat> so the pound actually is expected to be one of the uh, uh central banks that um are likely to hold for longer so it says here rate cut expectations are building though less rapidly than the euro than the us and eurozone right so um it looks like the bank of england and the market is not pricing in rate cuts as soon as the us or the uh, or the eurozone which basically is supporting the um the, the pound at the moment of course <clears throat> the data needs to support that and if the data comes out this week which is i think on tuesday we've got unemployment rate and gdp month for month as well before the actual interest rate decision so if anything um the unemployment rate let's say for example it kind of uh, maybe even ticks lower so i say unemployment comes in at 4.1 for example um and maybe gdp comes in uh better better than forecast then that should actually be a buy for the uh, british pound um, but not necessarily against again the, the, the US dollar. Um, I would, and I'm already in um, the pound Swiss, um, and I think a weaker currency like the Swiss franc or the euro is really where um, my money would be in buying uh, the uh, the pound. So um, pound dollar not really a pair that I'm interested in. But if you are, then um, either buys right now back down into this demand zone or you're looking for a short trade back up into this uh, supply zone around here that's what i would say <clears throat> but again it's, it's a really kind of a harder pair to trade i think if the data does come out disappointing though for example unemployment rate comes out you know higher than expected and maybe gdp comes out lower than expected uh, contracts more than expected then i think then the pound actually is the the market is going to reprice um uh, rate cuts coming forward a lot more than you might see and you're likely to see that actually the pound start to sell off a lot more so in fact that would be where um i think this 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 week is going to be definitely a um, an interesting week so i may get out of my uh, pound swiss trade depending on the data and actually reverse uh, my my trades in terms of my bias in terms of buying the uh, the british pound at the moment um so pound uh, yen again uh, all these zones might as well just delete everything <clears throat> reason being is because as i said before um there's really no no you know demand zones that are going to stand in the way technical analysis in general that's going to stand in the way of um of any kind of uh, fundamental resentment analysis uh really these are the areas that i would say on a price chart that are uh, would be considered expensive or cheap right this was a bargain price um you know at the time right here and then we saw uh you know prices are expensive so between a bargain and a cheap and a discount and expensive or premium prices we've come back inside here and then we've basically reacted off that area there or that price zone there and so i think any pullbacks into um you know these these lower areas and these lower zones could potentially be buying opportunities again it just depends on um the i've not only the pound data but also the um the expectation for the yen to high rates and again uh, keep an eye on the data because the market could have got ahead of itself in terms of uh, buying the yen 
because if the data doesn't support buying the yen on and the Bank of Japan doesn't want to hike rates in for example <clears throat> you know some sort of uh, recession that they might be going through or contraction at least then in fact this could actually be a decent buying opportunity in terms of um, buying the pound against the yen is the yen devalues. So um, again, a tricky pair to trade at the moment from a technical analysis perspective and also uh, fundamentally and risk sentiment wise. So uh, again, not really a pair that I'm looking at at the moment. Uh, Euro dollar, Euro dollar has come down. Uh, I kind of expected it to. Um, and yeah, let's Let's get into some of this analysis. So uh, the ECB, right, um, are also clashing with markets over rate cut timing survey shows. And so the European Central Bank won't lower interest rates as soon or as quickly as investors think, according to a Bloomberg survey of economists that suggests policymakers will push back against current market bets. And the current market bets, investors see almost 150 basis points of cuts next year kicking off as early as March. So economists only predict uh, reductions in September and December after June. So um, so again, I think that the European Central Bank will be the first of the major central banks to start to cut rates. Maybe Canada might be, but I think probably the European Central Bank are in a way worse position than the US at the moment. And the data is proving. So I do think any pullbacks should be um, uh, short in opportunities. So uh, again, not too sure whether prices are going to come all the way back up to this 95 area. So what you'd have to kind of look for is either a pullback into uh, and a lower low, right, a lower high, lower low, and then look for something like this to happen where you, where you get a move back into that supply zone, um, something like that. Or um, actually, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. You have to wait for something like that to happen. So you know, with that being said, um, you know, selling at lows is never the, the greatest idea, although uh, the guys in the group actually know that I uh, did get in on in a short position um, on the news. I rarely trade the news, but um, the news was uh, uh, caught the market offside, so I did actually get involved in it and nearly got stopped out. But um, that's a, maybe another a trade breakdown for another day. Hopefully, um, you know, it goes in my direction on the lower time frame. But yeah. So that's where we are, haven't been stopped out yet, and uh, let's see what happens. If it continues going lower, then brilliant. Um, but where are we today? I think if you're looking for buy trades, then a pullback down into the 107 is going to look like a very nice technical area to look for buy trades. And again, if you're looking for sell trades, I think you have to really kind of wait for prices to come up to the 109 fives at the moment or for lower highs, lower lows to be made, and then a pullback to the lower high. Um, Euro yen and the euro yen again, probably just deleting some of this analysis off the charts. And uh, we did come down not quite into this demand zone, but pretty much touched it by maybe or missed it by what's that, maybe a few pips. So I'm going to keep that uh, that demand zone there. So any really pullbacks at the moment uh, will be buying opportunities down here. If you want to be a buyer of the euro against the yen, any kind of sells at the moment, there's really no uh, supply zones until you really get up to the highs. And so it's um, a bit of a tricky one, this one. Uh, unless you maybe see something like this where it makes a bit higher highs, higher lows, maybe makes a low and then a pull back up to that area there before looking at uh, trade but uh, it looks like on the, on the daily it's going to take at least a, maybe a week or two or three for that scenario to possibly pay out so let's see what happens there um, but I think any pullbacks into uh, these higher areas I think are definitely shorting opportunities and looking to position yourself to buy the yen next year um, or this late, late this year in anticipation of rate hikes I think that's I think that the, the ceiling really has been a uh, has been reached in terms of uh, the yen valuation against the uh, or the euro valuation against the yen. Uh, looking at the Aussie dollar, and Aussie dollar again pulled back this week. Um, positive news for the dollar and not so good news for the Australian dollar as caused prices to kind of pull back a little bit. I do think at the moment that there could be <clears throat> a bit more of a pullback. Overall, I'm actually more bullish on the um, 
or I'm bullish on the uh, the Australian dollar um, for now, but not really against the uh, the US dollar against something like you know the uh, the Swiss franc or the euro would be you know is where I'm looking to buy. And so, um, but if you're looking to trade this pair, then you're looking to buy the uh, the Australian dollar, then any pullbacks into these demand zones. Uh, a decent if you're looking for a short trade in terms of uh, sales then I would just, let me just delete this level up here then you're looking for really a pullback into you know the, the high of this area here and I don't think prices are really gonna go much higher over Christmas so yeah any pullbacks uh, into this zone would be decent for a uh, a short trade uh, Aussie yen uh, which is really a measure of risk sentiment as well um, you know, we've had pretty much the same uh, price action across most, uh, if not all, yen pairs. Uh, but this one here, we did create a an actual um, uh, lower high, lower low there, and is pretty much the rest of the <clears throat> area here. And again, any pullbacks if you want to be a buyer of the Australian dollar down into these areas here, the 94 round number. If you are looking for a short trade, then you're looking at a move back up into the 96.50s, 97s. I think that's a decent area to look for. Any kind of short trades, if you wanna get short uh, on the Australian dollar and buy the, uh, the yen, again, in anticipation of a potential rate hike. Um, and gold, so we got this really nice uh, stop hunt caused a lot of traders to you know break out traders to go long on this area taking out a whole load of stops and then it's reversed on them causing them a lot of pain um, and uh, probably a lot of traders blowing their accounts if they don't use stop losses so um, it is what it is though uh, and you know this is the reason why you never buy at highs and never sell at lows or try never to do that because especially being a breakout trader yes there are times where you know breakouts uh, you know, do work, of course they work, um, but ultimately when they don't, they can have uh, some severe uh, consequences, especially depending on your uh, your risk management. So um, it's always really best to kind of, you know, look for pullbacks anyway. And even if this, you know, broke out at the time, yeah, uh, a lot of traders FOMO in, and then um, I would personally just wait for a bit of a pullback, right, and see if there's any kind of, um, uh, uh, discounts because that's now proof of value, right? That's proof that that's expensive for the uh, for the for gold at, at the moment, and now you're just looking for discounts, right? So um, this is where we are. So patience, you know, is a virtue. So uh, let's see what happens here. But in terms of uh, uh, supply zone, we've got a very wide supply zone, very very wide supply, um, and I would probably hesitate to kind of draw it like that um, one of the things that you can do is draw it as what I would term a bit of an auction so um, an auction is where the where I think the range is likely to start and so I do think that 80% of auctions are typically nice buy or sell areas so 80% is there and I do think that 80% right now for this auction range is there so i think this starts to look actually quite nice for a potential uh buy of course this is determined upon um dollar news right so if the dollar continues and the fed continue to uh, and the market prices out fed cuts yeah it then means and there's less likely to be a recession uh, going into next year, then you may see the likelihood that you're going to see gold continue to potentially go to the downside. So um, again, I think next week is going to be definitely important uh, for gold. I do think that um, we're likely to probably see some sort of auction to some degree uh, before eventually going higher. Uh, the, the, we're in the recession cycle. Uh, I say we're in it, but we're heading into it. Um, and so as we do start to head into a recession cycle, uh, gold and precious, some precious metals like, you know, silver as well, um, tend to appreciate as the Federal Reserve start to, you know, cut 
uh, interest rates. And so, yeah, gold should be supported over the medium to long term. But um, who knows where prices will reverse. Of course, you just take trades if you want to take this trade and manage your risk and just see whether it works out or not. But ultimately, from a long term perspective, um, definitely more bullish on gold. So um, if you do want to be a buyer in and around these zones, these are the levels that you're really kind of looking for, I think. Um, but again, you'd have to really uh, uh, look for certain um, triggers, which would be um, the uh, devaluation in the, uh, the dollar for you to look for any kind of uh, long trades on gold. So uh, yeah, that brings us to the end of the analysis part. And now let's get into the trades that I took for the week. So looking at two trades I took this week, uh, which is the dollar CAD and the uh, pound Swiss. So first the dollar CAD, why take the dollar CAD from a fundamental perspective? Um, the, uh, the I thought the dollar was uh, the stronger out of the two in terms of um, GDP interest rates. Um, the dollar has been suffering from some negative sentiment, um, which has kind of pushed prices you know, uh, lower and lower. but. Although prices are going lower, doesn't mean necessarily that the dollar is a, an all-out sell, which means that, um, in my mind, that the dollar uh, was a potential bargain at certain prices. And so at the end of Friday, after um, losing a, a trade on, on this, um, just because you know you kind of lose trades, fundamentally, the, the, uh, the, the fundamentals kind of like still stack up, then I will take another trade. Now, many of you can see uh, some indicators at the bottom of the chart, and uh, these are indicators uh, that I use uh, to enter on a, a daily time frame chart. And so um, the, the one of really of interest is the middle one, uh, and that's known as volume divergence. And so all that is is basically uh, indicating when there's a discrepancy between volume and price. And so uh, one of the, uh, again, strategies that I use is um, looking at volume divergence uh, with the other two indicators. And so um, at the end of Friday, when I saw this, I thought, Do you know what, um, that's a, a technical trade setup. So what I'll do is on the Monday or so Sunday night, I'll enter right here with a, um, with about a, I think it was a 35, no, 38 pip stop which is around here, yeah, 38 pips stop. And um, as you can see, I entered into a few positions right here, which all got triggered uh, on the Sunday uh, into Monday. And um, the high of the uh, trade ended up being a 3.42 uh, to one. Um, I took some profit off as we went um, up higher and so um, I'm in actually like one and a half positions um, at the moment and so I'm expecting prices to really kind of go to the upside uh, my profit targets at the moment are going to be um, one's going to be 50% uh, of this uh, this auction from this ultimate high to this low and then I've got another profit target that's at the 80% uh, area so around there and I'll be trying I've showed up my stop now as well so basically um, I can't lose so my stop is just below there locked in uh, profits and uh, reduce my loss so even if prices come back down now and stop me out um, it's still a profitable trade so um, yeah, this is looking uh, this is looking like a good trade at the moment. So let's see what happens with that, and I'll keep you updated in the in the coming week or weeks, depending on when it hits profit targets or basically stops me out. Right. Um, the next uh, pair that I was uh, uh, looked at as well uh, was on the um, Wednesday, and pretty much the same trade. Uh, we had prices come down into this area. Um, of of demand now uh, one of the things that is slightly different about this is um, is that uh, I posted a trade in the group that was and I was anticipating a, a stop hunt to happen in fact let me just find that post that I posted right so here it was uh, I posted this on the 6th um, of December and this was the trade and so on an, on an intraday uh, trade uh, setup this was looking very very nice so we were just planning for 
uh, stop hunt and uh, I take stop hunts in the direction of uh, my fundamentals. I ignore ones that are against my fundamentals. And so um, I was looking for buys on the uh, pound uh, Swiss. Uh, as this, again, fundamentally, I considered the pound in a better position uh, than the Swiss franc in terms of uh, monetary policy and uh, the expectation of rate uh, cuts. And so um, as uh, the Wednesday came in and Wednesday closed, I saw again uh, pretty much exact same setup on the uh, indicators below. And then but I decided to actually trade the stop hunt right just below the um, the, uh, the the demand zone. So when I say trade the stop hunt, what I mean is um, get in, it's, and it's quite a, an aggressive entry if you can call it aggressive. <clears throat> but it was a very very early entry in terms of um, you know because the stop hunt hadn't actually happened and took place yet, but I was anticipating that it would. Um, I had my stop loss at. Um, I think it was 30, I think it was about 31, 32 pips. So it was around here. Again, entered into a few positions, which, um, you know, turned out to be profitable. And I'm in now um, one of the positions out of the three still um, in this. So again, I'm planning on actually swing trade in this. Hopefully, 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 hopefully um, towards either these highs so around that 80 percent area and then i'm probably going to take off maybe the majority of the profits off of that one position and then leave maybe about 20 percent on just to see if it can run a bit further so let's see uh what happens here but again it's all going to be determined by what happens this week in terms of unemployment rate uh, gdp month for month I think if that data does come out, then brilliant. If it comes uh, it comes out good, then I can hold on. If not, let's say unemployment actually uh, rises, you know, uh, beyond the, the the forecast when the forecast comes out, then in fact, and prices start to turn around, then I think I think I'll just basically um, uh, cancel the trade in terms of to take whatever profits are remaining. Also, as well, I have moved my stop loss up as well, just below the uh, the low. So again, even if prices come back down, uh, I've locked in uh, profits, <coughs> taken profits, <coughs> partial profits, and also locked in and reduce my, my, my risk on the uh, remaining open position. So again, profitable trade regardless of what happens on um, on the trade. And so, yeah, that's pretty much my two trades. I did enter on the euro uh, dollar trade. I might go over that next week, depending on how it turns out. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll see. But um, but yeah, let's uh, actually, actually, no, not even depending on how it turns out. I'll go over it. Um, regardless of how it turns out in terms of whether it's a winner or a loser so you can basically see the rationale uh, behind the uh, the trade so yep those are two winners on the um, on the dollar cad and uh, pound swiss no losers this week um, and yeah let's see what happens and so yeah have a great sunday have a great week and uh, speak to you all soon